lovelies, this is Simsfell, and welcome to episode 14 of The Sims Medieval, where our lady priestess, I think priestess, where our lady, Floessa Smokefrost, is giving a sermon, which is the first time we're actually doing this, so that's super exciting, but I think when we left off, we had some important things to do, some decisions to make. No, did we already make decisions? Oh, we had to, yes, we had to go find some, or get some advice from some of the previous fishermen of the challenge, or something of the sort. We had to go ahead and do that, but before we could run ahead and do any of that quest items, or quest things, we have some responsibilities for the day which she needs to complete as part of being the Peter and Priest. Yes, she's a sister. She's a sister Floessa. There we go. I almost forgot what she was called. Um, she is a priestess, but they, they consider themselves sisters. Yeah. There we go. That makes sense. They're brothers and sisters. All coolios. Right, so we need to go ahead and give a sermon, which is what she's currently doing. We've got a fair bit of people in here. I'm not sure if they're currently enjoying themselves. We'll have to see how this works out. But okay, we've got a few commoners. We've got a huntswoman, the innkeeper, and milliner. Okay, that's pretty cool. And before she went ahead and was doing this, she wasn't actually getting along too well with a friar Hendrik. You'd think you're in the same monastery, you might as well get along. No, she was actually belittling his manhood, which is quite mean and I was a bit confused, but then I was like, wait a second, she is cool, so it absolutely makes sense. I think she would strut around the monastery, probably being nice to all the people who come here, except for the children, as we know, she's going to pick on them from time to time. But I think she would actually bully the people that she works with, like the friar who is supposed to be her brother in arms. No, I think she would actually bully him because it's within the institute and obviously the friar is not going to go ahead and gossip about her to someone else, especially when they're supposed to be setting examples for the rest of the citizens. So I've got that going. She is giving a humorous sermon. And I think everything is going pretty well so far. It seems as though the people are quite receptive to it. And um, that's probably good. I don't think she would give a somber sermon. Maybe a casual one, but I don't think a somber one. Because she would want to be known as, Oh, look at that, the dark beauty in the monastery who has a bright and lovely personality. is very eloquent and just understands the people. Really knows what we desire in our faiths or in life, more say. So I totally see that, I totally understand that. Even though it's really sad and really mean and two-faced, but hey, that's the way people work sometimes. So she's going ahead doing that once she wraps up. I don't know how long the sermon goes for, to be honest. Okay, we've got a little bit left. Once she wraps up, are there any children she can actually snag? She's in a reasonable mood, I'd say, but I don't think there's any children around here. Nope, no children. Who's this? Um, the farmer. Hey! Hey! Farmer! Are you- oh, he's sending a message to someone. That's okay. I thought you were actually gonna go ahead and try and steal something over. Like, that's not cool. That is not cool. But let's rush this on over, and then once she has completed her sermon, we need to go ahead and do some other things for the day. Okay! Sister Floessa's sermon was well received by the congregation and the church received 77 simoleons in donations. That is amazing. Okay, we also need to go ahead and bless a pirate with the watcher's favor. I need to make sure I support the righteous warriors of this nasty war. Yes, where's the pirate? Bless the pirate. Bless the pirate. We're going to watch his favor. We're not going to convert you because we don't want to force it onto you. Why? Because Floessa doesn't necessarily believe. Yes, she identifies as a Peteran in public, but I don't think in her heart of hearts she is truly a believer of the Peteran faith. So I don't think she would go around forcing people to convert, not unless she absolutely had to as part of the church's regime. Not the church, I mean the monastery's regime, which the monastery doesn't really have one, a church would. But um, yeah, okay, so she's going to go ahead, maybe impress the pirate along the way. Maybe he would be receptive. <laughs> Who knows? I feel as though if she tried to convert a pirate, he would be receptive to her because she would be just so eloquent in convincing her and she looks absolutely gorgeous. So I feel like any pirate who were to get into a conversation with her would kind of be tangled in her web of lies. So that's what I get. That's the vibe I get when we go to Floresta. And who's this? So this is the pirate. Pirate Reginald. He's actually, let's see, I mean he's not terrible to be honest, but I do feel like he'll be very ensnared by her. 
Thank the Watcher for the church and these fine pirates. I must spread the good word to assist in their victory. Since when does the monastery identify as a church? They're two different things. And why does she have so many? Okay, now she wants to advocate piracy. <laughs> you know why that's funny? Because I actually totally believe she would do that. I feel as though she would advocate piracy. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and see what this is about. This war is a terrible thing. Advice directly from the Watcher should encourage people to help pick sides correctly. Okay, well, who are you going to advocate piracy to? What about, who's this? This is the maid. Who the hell do we advocate piracy to? Huh. Well, advocate... No. Where's the option? I don't see where we have the option to do that. Advocate piracy. How the hell do we adv- Oh, 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 we need to go ahead to a platform and then we need to advocate. Ah, I see, I see. So we must swiftly return to the church. Um, Pirate Reginald is telling us something, but I apologize. We must return, we must spread the good word about your people. Ah, okay. So hopefully you'll be less persecuted wherever you go. I mean, in this kingdom, in Sandusk of all places, you should not be persecuted because the queen herself, Queen Amasir Iced Flame herself supports pirates over here. So this is so supposed to be at least a pirate haven, if not a holiday destination. So pirates, feel free to come, feel free to come. But we need to head over here, back to the monastery. We've got this platform. Hopefully people listen to us because we've got some important words to share with them. We shall advocate piracy until 8 p.m. What the hell? No, we're not going to evangelize indefinitely. She probably could, but I don't think she would. Beauty sleep is a precious thing for her, and she's getting very tired. But I think she would actually do this before retiring to bed. And wow, that's crazy. We actually ended up spending the whole day running around trying to do our duties for the monastery that we didn't even get time to go and speak to the people that we need to speak to. That's just crazy. But then again, I feel like she would put more importance in what the monastery needs than in whatever other duties or interests she has going on because, I mean, she, I feel like she cares very much about reputation. I mean, this is what her joining the monastery is all about, it's about reputation. So I feel as though she would very much. Is being receptive, Lilina? Are you being a frame? Are you being um, receptive? Children, children, there's no children. Okay. Goody Taran and Maid Foy, they're not getting along, huh? Well, come here, listen to us advocate piracy. You guys need to be told the truth. And the truth is that pirates are absolute angels, I must say. Demons of the sea, yes. Demons of the sea. But still, as people, they're probably angels, you know? So let's go ahead and evangelize. Also, this probably makes her look really good, if you think about it. Because people will see her and say, oh, look at her. She's got such a good heart. She can't even find the evil in pirates and all the dastardly deeds that they do. Okay, well, they're having a listen. Hopefully this is gonna get her reputation and her popularity up as well. It is low, but look at that. It's slowly but surely rising. Okay, she's gonna do this till 8.30, and then probably head off to bed. And she's feeling a little bit of that bite, that pent up anger. Must find a victim to vent upon. Okay, well, you know what? I actually wasn't going to get her to have a terrible relationship with the friar, but since she did that autonomously, I feel as though, you know what, if there's no children around, obviously, I think she would kind of bully around that friar. Especially since I don't think she would look at him and see, what the hell, his like facial hair, is <laughs> he's got ginger facial hair and like black hair. What is up with that, sir? What, did you dye your facial hair? What is, is that some Peter and style going on? I don't understand. I think she would definitely make fun of him for that. Definitely. And I don't think, since she is very vain, I think she'd be very judgmental of the fact that he is not a beautiful sim. And that absolutely bothers her that she has to share this monastery with someone like him. <laughs> then again, it, it could be that she's not exactly bothered by that. I mean, I feel like she would tease him just to make it seem as though she's bothered, but I don't think she would be. Why? Because she would feel good. If you're surrounded by sims or other people who don't look as good as her, that'd make her feel more elevated, wouldn't it? 
I feel as though that's the case. She is cruel as well as vain. So she would be, yeah, pulling him for no absolute reason. So this is almost done. There we go, complete. And now, where's the fry? Fry, hey, fryer. Did the fryer leave? Did the, no, this is Acolyte Ben. I don't know who the hell this Acolyte is, so I don't want to go ahead and be mean to him unnecessarily. Okay, well, let's go and make some food then. We'll make some, we'll make some pigeon soup. We're feeling like some pigeon. And also, from the last episode, the only change I went ahead and made was actually pop down this really tasty looking pie over here because we did say that she's someone who cares more about the food she eats. Like, she would want a little bit more fancy food than the common folk. Um, and, I mean, the common folk would be eating the sort of stuff she eats, except I think she absolutely refuses to eat gruel. She'd rather starve than eat gruel. So, this made sense to me, because I feel like from time to time she probably gets donated, you know, since she is the dark beauty of Sandusk that people speak about, and, you know, the one, the kind of the spider who lures, the sorceress spider who lures all the lovely, I mean, she's not actually a sorceress, but, you know, kind of like the spider who lures people into the monastery. <laughs> Seriously, the monastery is just seeming scarier and scarier to me as time goes on, but I feel as though she would get donations from maybe admirers and she would like to snag a little bit or feast a little bit on... Okay, where's the food? Wait, why does she have to put food... Eat, eat the pigeon soup. Why do you have to put the food where I literally can't see it? That's so mean. <laughs> I can't see the food if it's literally almost under the bed. Okay, she's going to eat that, but yeah, that totally makes sense. I think from time to time during the day, she'd maybe take a chunk out of that, that lovely looking pastry and eat some of it. Maybe not share some with the fryer. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? She might, be, she might be a little bit of a bully like that. What is the... Oh, child, I see the child. Okay. The ward. Whose ward is this? I don't know, but she's puny. Oh, she is bullyable material. That's not a word, but... Oh, she's puny. We need to go ahead and bully her, I think. She's gonna run ahead, chat with her just a little bit, chat with her just a little bit. See if we can get her away from all these people. Let's chat with her just a little bit. Hey, hey girl, do you wanna, do you wanna come over here? Chat over here with us? Oh, look at that, she's having a chat. And she's gonna go ahead and argue. Can she, no? Not welcome home, but she's going to argue with this child. Oh, she's going to say, oh, look at that dress. It looks absolutely awful. It doesn't suit you at all. You should wear something a little bit more humble. That is, after all, the Peter and Faith preaches, darling. That is what it preaches. You don't have the face for this dress at all. Oh, no, it looks absolutely atrocious. <laughs> I feel like she would say something like that to a child. <laughs> okay, she's gonna go ahead and go to bed. And then, when she wakes up in the morning, we'll have to see. I think she's gonna get up a little bit late, unfortunately, so we might not be able to get, um, like, go to the docks before our duty set in, but we'll have to see. Okay, so where does the fryer go? Oh, Sappy Teal Sky, you're supposed to be sleeping, sir. He seems to be fully healed, so that's all good and well. I think he's okay now. But where does the friar sleep? Huh. Obviously, he can't share the same bed as us, but I would think he still wanders around the monastery, but I guess not? Huh. It would be cool if I had access to the right wing there, as I've said in a previous episode. But still, okay, she should be getting up pretty soon. The people are coming by yet again. Are you going to come up yet? It's time to wake up. She's going to go ahead and eat something. Let's go ahead and make something to eat. Oh, well, she did wake up quite early. I guess she doesn't need too much sleep. Let's have some onion soup. That would be nice. She's going to have some onion soup. Her store is actually pretty good. So we don't need to go running to the village to buy some more things. But she's going to make some food for her. And, ah, maybe she should go and talk to Sir Epitil's guy. Huh. She should go and talk to him. I think she would be a little bit enamored by him because he works at, um... I don't think she would know about Sir Epitil's guy's humble nature. And just because, you know, his title, he's like captain of the guard and he lives so close to the, the castle with a tower of his own, I think she would be enamored by his power and his authority. 
Mm. Yes, he would seem very charming to her, very, very、um, capable as a man. So I think she'd be very into him. Okay, let's go ahead and eat this. Seriously, why does she go ahead and shove the food almost at the foot of her bed? It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, come on. Before, what they used to do is just shove the food or put the food right in the middle of the room. At least then I could see. But now she's doing some very worrisome stuff. So. Okay, well, it seems as though she wants to go bully someone again. Well, unfortunately, your fryer isn't here, honey. Your fryer is not here. Who's this? This is the playwright. Well, the fryer isn't here. You don't have any children to bother, so fortunately, you can't do any of that. But after you eat, I think she's eaten, so she's all well and fine. We can actually go over to the docks, and if we see any children along the way, we'll try and bully them there. But let us go to the docks. Let us go to the docks. Okay, and then hopefully we can get a move on on some of the other quests or things that we need to do. So running, running, running. I mean, she's probably taking her sweet time walking, especially when she walks past someone else. Hmm. Because she probably think, oh, maybe I should walk a little bit slower so they can appreciate my beauty. I feel like that's something she would do. Okay, let's come on down here. Wonderful. So we've got two people we need to speak to. I guess I should talk to both fishermen and see what they have to say. Okay, so these are the fishermen here. They look quite interesting. Fisherman Barney and Fisherman Marlon. They look very interesting, I must say. Let's ask for advice. Let's go ahead. Let's ask for advice. See what they have to say. Hey, who's speaking? Millionaire Jason, move out of the way. The sister Floessa has something of importance. This guy really looks interesting. Like he looks like a character.、I'm、telling you, he looks like a character, a notable character too. Like he's memorable. Oh hey there! You want help with the competition? Well, if you want my help, you cook me up an eel stew, and I'll offer you some advice that's bound to win you the competition. Old Barney can catch anything in the water, but he don't cook that well. Just don't listen to that Marlon. He's a lying liar. Oh really? Well, we're gonna ask Marlon for advice. Thank you very much, because we're not bothered to cook your eel right now. Oh come on! Is someone in the middle? Wait, hey Marlon, come back. Come back. We are talking to you. How are you not ensnared by our beauty? <laughs> okay, let's see what he has to say, guys. Anything of interest, sir? Anything of interest? Oh, you want help winning the competition, do you? Nice of you to go and seek out an old sort like me. Now, if you want my help, just bring me an apple and we'll get started. Oh, and don't listen to Barney over there. He's a bit crazy. Oh well. Hmm. Both of you want me to bring something. Whose advice should Floresa follow? You know what? You know what? Wait, who's Barney and who's Marlon? Wait, wait, wait! I need to decide. That's Marlon. You know what? I would rather. I would rather give someone buy someone an apple than have to cook an eel stew. I'm sure an apple would be cheaper than eel anyways. So thank you very much. But I'm gonna yeah pick. Pick Marlon. I like the cut of Fisherman Marlon's jib. There we go. We'll go ahead and pick him. Now we just need to go and find an apple. Let's acquire an apple. Where the hell will we find an apple? To the village, my friends. To the village. Let's go ahead. Find our way right to the village. Where is it? Right over here. Go to the village shops and hopefully snag ourselves an apple. And do we have time to do that?、Ah, we need to evangelize and study the watcher. Ah,、oh, gosh, dang it! Okay, that's fine. We'll put all of that on on hold for just a little bit because we are already out. So might as well go ahead and do some of that. We'll buy an apple, I think, and then apple, apple. Oh, hello, apple. Yes, I will take. You know what? While we're here, we'll just take five apples. It's worth twenty. So we'll go. We'll. Oh, jeez. Okay, okay. While walking down the street, Sister Floresa heard some crying down an alley. Glancing that way, she saw a small, very dirty child crying by a gutter. Help her! Perhaps the child had simply lost her mother. The only way to know was for Sister Floresa to ask what was wrong. Ignore her. Worthless children like this were everywhere. If one were to stop and help every single one in distress, nothing would ever get done. Both of these things seems like something she would do. Help her because she's in public and reputation. Ignore her because well she's cruel. She wouldn't care. But I think ignoring her doesn't necessarily inflict more harm on the child. So she wouldn't she, like she wouldn't do that. If it was mock her, maybe she would choose that. But I think she would help her in this case because 
she's in public and that just it, like helps her reputation. So let's go ahead and help the child. Please don't rush through. The child explained that she had lost her only toy down the nearby gutter, but her arms were too short to reach it. Wrinkling her nose, Clarissa got down on her stomach and reached shoulder deep into the gutter. Ew. After feeling around for a second, she was able to pull up the toy as well as an interesting little trinket. Received a mystical metal fragment. Huh. Okay, well, she's going to come back from the village shops while she has returned. And I think she's going to start heading back to the monastery because we need to do some other stuff there. And then when we have time, either at the end of the day or maybe tomorrow morning, we'll probably go ahead and then visit Marlon again. But I think I'm going to go off and end this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.